I have a confession. Friends, welcome back to episode two of The Great Declutter, where I shop my stash for one last time. Today we are talking about cheek color. So we'll be covering powder blush, bronzer, highlight, and contour. Let's get started. Okay, onto the powder blush collection. So I actually wear more cream blush than powder blush. So theoretically, I should be able to make a really good dent on this declutter here. I'm just gonna start picking out the favorites that come to my mind. So one of my favorite powder blushes of all time is the Hourglass uh, Ambient Lighting Blush Formula. I love this, it's very sheer. Um, so it's definitely one that you have to like build slowly, but I like that as we've already as we've already, what's the word? Established, we have established. <laughs> so I'm going to keep the Hourglass Dim Infusion, which is the softest of peaches. You really have to build that up to, to see it, but it has a beautiful luminosity. Um, Hourglass, I think, really nails that refined, elegant luminosity that just lightly catches the light. So these blushes definitely do that. I also love the shade Mecca Glow. I don't think this is available anymore. I think this was some Mecca exclusive, but it's another kind of peachy shade. Do I need both? You know what? I don't need both. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that one. I'm looking at these Hourglass palettes and they are very much pulling on my heartstrings. But truthfully, I know that I do not reach for these blush palettes as much as I reach for the single hourglass blushes. I don't know what it is, blush palettes, they just fall out of my consciousness. I forget that I have them. So I'm actually not going to keep any of the hourglass palettes. Oh my God, that breaks my heart. Um, these two shades of hourglass blushes are kind of fuchsia tones, not really my vibe. This, okay, this is one blush palette that I can see myself keeping. Um, this is Long Gone, it's by By Terry, it's a Sun Designer palette, but this gorgeous blushy kind of vibe here, I just take all of these shades and I take it over the entire high point, um, a little bit on the forehead, on the tops of the, the cheekbones, on the nose, and it gives you that kind of like sun, sun swept blushy vibe that I love, so I'm going to keep that guy. A drugstore blush that I adore and find myself reaching for frequently is the Revlon Naughty Nude. This has a slight luminosity running through it and a little bit of a soft beige nude color, but my gosh, that picks up on the apple of the cheek beautifully. I'm gonna keep that. The Tarte Amazonian Clay Blushes. This is a cult formula for years and years. Um, this is a great blush option if you struggle with longevity because these have really great lasting power. Um, truthfully, I just never reach for them even though they are beautiful products. That is the story of my life. One blush that I genuinely can't let go of, I just have an unusual pull towards it, is the Too Faced Perfect Flush Blush in Sparkling Bellini. It's shimmery and it's peach. Two things that I really like. I had just reached over this one again and again, so I'm gonna keep him. I have to keep the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. This is a very pale, peachy, orangey peach shade with a gorgeous, warm luminosity running through it. And this blush, if you told me in a blind test that it was a very high-end um, luxury blush, I would totally believe you. I'm gonna keep that guy, love him. While on the topic of expensive luxury blushes, let us talk about the Tom Ford blushes. So I have Ravish, which is kind of like a burnt reddish color. I've got Gold Lust, which is a peach with uh, some uh, shimmer running through it. And here is Inhibition, beautiful blushes truly gorgeous formulas. I cannot fault them. I never reach for them. So I, it just breaks my heart and I think that they deserve to be loved and used every day. So I will not be keeping those. Let's talk about MAC. I love a bit of MAC, um, especially their blushes. Um, one that I have come to again and again, more as a blush topper, to be honest. The uh, MAC Fairly Precious Extra Dimension Blush, very shimmery one this one, uh, and I like to pop it just on the apple of the cheek so that when I smile, get a little bounce of light on the cheek, but definitely one that I would probably be placing over another blush. I'm gonna keep that guy. In a similar vein, I love the MAC Dainty. So as far as pink blushes go, this is probably the one that first comes to mind and my hand tends to gravitate towards this one. Ah, 
a beautiful pink blush. Again, with some really fine, well done luminosity. It's nothing cheap or, or tacky. It's really refined and beautiful. I'm going to keep MAC Dainty. The Apu Juicy Jelly Blusher. Um, so I decided to pick up the powder, powder blushes and these are so sheer. They're so incredibly sheer that I struggle to get them to show up on my skin. Um, so unfortunately those were a little bit of a fail for me. I have a whole Cossas brand overview if you want to see some more Cossas. Um, but these blushes are again pretty. Never, never search for them. Never reach for them. Oh, this is a beautiful one from Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, this is the Filmstar Bronze and Blush Glow. Oh, he stays. I do love my Chanel blushes. So this is a baked formula that has some fine luminosity running through it. I have here the shade uh, Rose Initial, which is probably my favorite shade right now. It has sort of like a warm pink tone. And this is another blush that is so incredibly sheer that you really build it very slowly. I don't think that's gonna be everyone's cup of tea. If you like a pigmented blush, a lot of these picks are not going to float your boat. But I really love a softly pigmented blush. So I'm going to keep the shade Rose Initial and also Espiegel, which is a really old shade that I can't get rid of. I also have Rose Bronze and Reflex in the Chanel. Don't reach for these shades as much. I'm gonna leave those. The Boo Blush by Charlotte Tilbury. This is actually a very pretty formula. It's got um, a, a luminous center and then a, a colored, colored outer ring, very soft blush. Yeah, although I enjoy them, they're not, they're not blowing me away, so I'm gonna leave those today. Oh, MAC Warm Soul. This is an old school, old school recommendation from YouTube. Should I put some on? Let me put a little bit on. It's very soft. It's like a nude blush, Warm Soul. Nah, he can stay. That's it. That's it. We did it. Okie dokie, let us move on to bronzers. So over the past year or two, I have been wearing bronzer less and less. Let me explain. It seems like every time I go to put on bronzer, it starts to feel like a lot of makeup really quickly. And a lot of bronzers on the market are quite pigmented. So I find I get a bronzer helmet really fast. So really I wanna keep just a few bronzers, just the few that I use and enjoy. Let's start with hourglass again. So I have three hourglass bronzers here and I'm going to be keeping nude bronze light. So the hourglass ambient bronzers are like the ambient blushes. They have a very sheer formula and a luminosity, a very gentle luminosity, very tasteful that doesn't pick up on any uh, fine lines, texture, um, peach fuzz, anything like that. So they sit really beautifully on the skin and don't create too much texture. So I'm gonna keep Nude Bronze Light, which is the lightest of the three. And it is so sheer, just how I like it. I like them sheer. On a similar sheer note, I'm going to be keeping the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. So I just actually purchased this recently in light and light medium. And this is actually a cream product. It's a very, very sheer cream. So it's like a, a tint. They're just very lightly bronzes and warms the skin. You can be quite generous with this and it never goes to bronzer helmet territory or never looks like a lot of makeup. I think Makeup by Mario did something really interesting um, with this formula. So I'm going to be keeping light and light medium and I will keep, uh, keep experimenting with those. I did really enjoy this one, the NARS Laguna Sunkiss Bronzing Cream, but again, just so pigmented that it becomes kind of difficult to work with. So even though I love that shade, I mean, come on. <laughs> a little bit of that on my beauty blender and it's a bronzer helmet um, immediately. So I will actually not be keeping that, despite the fact that I love the shade and I've, and I've used it and enjoyed it a lot. I think I will keep No, I will not. I'm gonna keep Nars Laguna, which is a classic. This is um, quite a sheer formula as well. I don't find this to be excessively pigmented, but it has a very, um, 
uh, it has a powder formula that sits very closely to the skin. So I'd feel it doesn't like register as a lot of makeup on the skin. I will be keeping NARS Laguna. Uh, these bronzers from Guerlain, oh my gosh, I feel like I should put these in the vault because they have so many memories attached to them. Some other noteworthy products that we see here, MAC Give Me Sun, instant Oompa Loompa. I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated that people love this so much because it genuinely made me look so orange. I, um, I've heard a lot of people discuss the Tom Ford bronzers. These are mega expensive and a really beautiful product and a beautiful compact. I mean, what a sublime piece of makeup we've got here. But these bronzers just don't wow me. Um, they tend to lean quite warm, the Tom Ford bronzers. The Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Sun Kiss Glow Bronzer. This formula is actually lovely. It's got that uh, dry silicon slip somewhere between a cream and a powder, and it really blends beautifully into the skin. My concern with this one is it's just way too warm. The Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow. This is a stunning product. If you have a lighter skin tone, these, um, these kind of shades are gonna look really beautiful on you. Not too warm, that bronzer. Yeah, beautifully formulated, rarely, rarely reach for it. The butter bronzer is beautiful if you want a sheer, um, sheer bronzer from the drugstore. That's really nicely formulated. But yeah, I just, I just feel like all these products um, deserve to get more love and they will get more love in their new homes. They gotta go. Next up, we have highlighters. We've got liquid highlighters, powder highlighters, cream highlighters, drugstore, high end. In fact, we had so many highlights that we can't actually fit them all in the frame, but these are the best bits. Number one highlight. Let me see if anyone can guess it. My number one highlight is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Beauty Light Wand. This is in the shade Spotlight. I actually just finished the shade Pillow Talk. It was featured in my most recent um, empties, but Spotlight is a little bit more of like a neutral, like a neutral gold. And this is beautiful on top of the cheekbones. It has a glossy effect. So it makes the cheekbones look really wet and glossy, but they're not sticky or glittery or anything like that. Um, and it really doesn't pick up on, on any of that kind of texture or peach fuzz. It's just one of my all time favorite highlights. Now my question is, where is the cap? But that is a problem for future Karima. Whoa, oh my God. Oh. I also have a ton, you can see here, a ton of ColourPop highlights. ColourPop Super Shock highlights are beautiful. They've got so many like undertones. You want a pink undertone, a golden undertone. You want a blue flash, they've got it. Um, ColourPop has heaps of variety. I think I will keep the shade Flexitarian. So Flexitarian is a very bright highlight. This Super Shock cheek formula is kind of like a putty. It's a cream meets a powder. You can apply it like a cream or a powder. And Flexitarian has a really strong reflex. Uh, and I like to put this one just on the highest point of the cheekbone, just to really exemplify that glowy bounce on the top of the cheekbone. So yes, I will keep Flexitarian. I do really miss these guys. I haven't worn them for a while, but I want to, I want to keep one in my collection. This is the Hourglass Vanish Highlights. I've got two shades. I have here Gold Flash. Mmm, whoa. And Champagne Flash. That one has a little bit more of a golden vibe. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I think I'm gonna keep the Gold Flash, which is that lighter one. Yoink! Man, this is a this is a vibe down here. The MAC cream color bases. This is such an old school memory. If you were around early YouTube, you might remember these. It's a cream highlighter, the cream color base um, that has a very refined luminosity. Another one that looks quite glossy on the cheekbones. Yeah, these are beautiful. I actually might repurchase these at some stage, but um, these guys are just old. I do really enjoy actually the um, Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Luminous Light. This is a highlight that I would say is a good one for say bridal. It's so soft. It's got that kind of satiny, gauzy, very soft finish. Um, so I think it would be one of the most elegant highlighters kind of on the table here. I'm gonna put this in my one last chance pile. Another one I want to put in the last chance pile is the Benefit What's Up. 
This is a fabulous cream highlighter. Like I need another cream highlighter, but look at it. Wow, gorge. I'm gonna put that in one last chance. Man, I, this is so nostalgic going through this collection. I remember that Michelle Crossan and I have a video where we absolutely lose our minds over this sleek highlight. Look at it. Oh my God. These were the days of like the blinding highlight on YouTube. Woo! You guys. Ah. Bobby Brown Shimmer Brick. Oh my God, so much nostalgia. Let's do a little bit more nostalgia for those of you who are been around for a long time. Does anyone remember this? The Dior Amber Diamond Powder. Ah, gorgeous. Oh, so many memories. This is beautiful actually, this um, Hourglass uh, Highlighting Trio. These um, powders, despite the fact that they're hourglass, they're quite, uh, quite reflective. These. They've got a few different shades here, a bit of a pink, a bit of a beige. I think I might give this one one last chance. This Charlotte Tilbury highlight um, palette actually didn't do anything for me, in case anyone cares, in case anyone's interested. Yeah, just a little bit, um, felt a little bit powdery for me. Oh, the Marc Jacobs Spotlight. This is a brand that's no longer available, but this was another highlight that I adored for a long time creamy, reflective, glossy cheekbones. I think I want to keep one of these guys. It's by Segui. Segui, uh, I'm definitely mispronouncing that. Um, but I believe it's a Spanish brand and they have some beautiful liquid highlights. So this shade is, ugh, I don't know what kind of shade it is. I've got two shades, this one. This formula actually reminds me a lot of the Lisa Eldridge liquid highlight in that it's so, the luminosity is so elegant and tasteful that it doesn't read like shimmer at all. I think I will keep the pinky guy. Stuff like this, like Pat McGrath Labs, I'm sure that these are gorgeous highlights, but I just don't find myself often like requiring a pink flash or a greeny purple flash. I know that that was really in fashion for a bit there, these kind of like flash highlighters that flash all these iridescent shades. Um, not, not my vibe. Oh my gosh, look at this. These Burberry highlights. <gasps> look at it. Look at it. And these are beautiful. Burberry makeup is stunning. But to be honest, I don't wear a ton of powder highlight in general anymore. And it is for that reason that I think I should cut the cord here. All this stuff has got to go. Lucky last category for today, we have contours. All of your slightly gray toned powders that are great for creating shadows on the face. So by far my most used contour of right now is the Westman Atelier Stick in Biscuit. So when I first purchased this, when I first swatched it in store, I wasn't super wowed by it, although I'm, it's, it's kind of hard, I guess, to be wowed by a contour, not the most interesting color. But upon playing with this further, I have really grown to love this product. The color is spot on. It's got that kind of gray shadow thing going on, but also, the, the formula is so easy to work with. I actually apply this one with fingers and just like dab it out with fingers. It, it's your kind of everyday, everyday girl, just apply it with your fingers kind of vibe. And for that, it works really well. I'm keeping that guy. I often use and find myself using the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand. This one um, also has a great color. It's a sheer formula. The packaging, as with all Charlotte Tilbury, packaging it has a tendency to like burst and leak so this one's had an accident at some stage and i'll probably need to repurchase him because he's looking a bit old and worn but i will keep this guy i have to keep the uh, kevin aquan sculpting powder in medium this is a very old compact um, but this product is a cult classic for many years it is i think one of the perfect tones for a contour it has a little bit of gray, but not so much that it's hard to use. And the formula is buttery smooth. I mean, it's Kevin Aquan, right? You know it's going to be something beautiful. So yes, I will be keeping Kevin Aquan sculpting. Oh my gosh, this is 
such a throwback. You guys, if you've been around for years and years and years, you will remember Chanel Notorious. This was like a, a limited edition release and I remember everyone was like, what? Why is there a gray face powder? And I was like, yes, give me that gray face powder. It's not that gray, it's very, very sheer. Um, but this one I think I will put into the vault because this has lots of sentimental value. I'm really conflicted about this one. This Tarte palette, uh, I think that this Tarte Tartus Pro Glow palette is beautiful and in particular I really enjoy this contour. It has a wonderful creamy formula, very easy to blend. The color is spot on and the powder contour is brilliant um, topped over that cream. This palette deserves to be loved all over. This one I think I will keep. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm, not my favorite name, but Nudegasm face palette. I uh, carried this one through Europe and it came in such handy. I think that this tone here is a wonderful contour, very soft, and all of these shades are softly pigmented as we've discovered is my tastes. I will keep this guy. In the similar vein to the Tarte, like this Urban Decay Naked Skin Shapeshifter, brilliant palette, really well thought out. Can I justify keeping this whole palette for one shade? It just, it feels wrong. One product that I just don't really get, I don't get it, is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. This has a cult status, it's been a favorite among many for years. First of all, the, the formula, like I would venture to say that some people would call this greasy. It definitely has like quite a, a wet emollient texture. And the shade, this contour shade here reads so warm. I can't even really use this as a bronzer. The shade is so warm, but the highlight is, it's like a face gloss. It's gorge, absolutely no shimmer or reflect. It's just shine. Um, but yeah, personally never really use this guy. Don't really like him. We'll pass him on. I do really love actually the Revlon Sculpt and Highlight Contour Kit. Wonderful option from the drugstore. It has your banana powder, which is wonderful for like illuminating areas of the face, particularly under the eyes. You've got a few contours, really well thought out palette. Um, really beautiful formula too. Do I have enough face for all of this contour? I will pop this in the one last chance pile. Uh, the Fenty Matchstick in Amber. This is another really great shade. And that, that formula is nice. Why don't, why don't I use this more often? All right, I'm gonna put this in the one last chance pile. Oh, this is makeup geek. <laughs> so sad. In addition, Becca. <laughs> so much nostalgia. All right, you guys, I think we gotta call it here. They gotta go. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode, which will be all about decluttering eyes, eyeshadow, eyeliner, mascara, all of that good stuff. Also, if you'd like to come and say hello to me on Instagram, I'm there at Karima Nikimi, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.